the absolute slumping in the cost of, of producing solar energy. What's behind all of this? Well, I think it surprised a lot of people. Uh, most of it uh, is improvements in technology as well as uh, looking at the uh, you know, subsidies that have helped uh, the, the industry along. Um, so they gained economies of scale, and that's really what it's about, just you know, improvements and expansion in, in production. So clearly technology helping. We've got a great chart that's also along in your story showing that how much the cost of solar farms has decreased. By 2025, we're looking at how much they're going to be producing dollars per kilowatt. Really, it's quite phenomenal, the sort of savings. I want to know which countries are leading the charge. I mean, I'm guessing it's the sunnier climes like the Middle East. Oh, yeah, they, they certainly help uh, because solar is, is much more cost effective in sunnier climates. Uh, but it's, it's true even in, in Germany. You know, they led the way in, in solar uh, expansion. Uh, early on, willing to spend a little bit more so that they could uh, you know, advance the industry. Uh, so it, it's not going to matter within a decade. It's not going to matter whether you're a sunny country or, or you know, even a somewhat rainy country. Uh, even even uh, your home in, in uh, England would probably good, be a good place for solar. <laughs> really? Well, they have great wine in England now. I mean, I'm, nothing will amaze me. But Chris, give us a sense of whether we'll see Donald Trump. We've heard so much talk about the resurgence of coal. Is all that talk? Can coal have any sort of resurgence? He's, he's fighting market uh, conditions, and uh, the fact is that uh, coal is more expensive than uh, a number of other uh, energy technologies, uh, more expensive than natural gas, more expensive than wind power, and certainly more expensive, about twice as expensive. If you look at the economics of building a new plant now, uh, solar is half the cost of uh, coal. Now, what intrigued me about the first chart, yes, there is a plummeting in the cost of producing solar energy, but wind looks pretty cost-effective too. Will actually wind, wind end up being the most efficient? And what happens when perhaps the wind doesn't blow and the sun doesn't shine? <laughs> well, one thing that's, that's valuable about the wind and solar combination is they're complementary. Uh, wind generally blows stronger at night, solar obviously better during the day, uh, but uh, yeah, I, I think you'll see both of them continue to expand. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's going to require you know, all kinds of energy. Uh, because solar and wind don't always blow, you're going to need some, some uh, generation that's there when, when the wind doesn't blow. And that, that's usually natural gas and, and nuclear, uh, and, and less so coal plants. So talking of nuclear, I was just coming over from Berlin where they've been retrenching out of nuclear post, the, of course, the terrible disaster that happened in Japan. Where does nuclear fit into all of this from a cost perspective, though? Uh, nuclear is a lot more expensive. Uh, it's even harder to, to gauge because there are so many cost overruns and it takes so many years to build. One of the big advantages solar has over all other technologies is once you have the panels, you just drop them you know, on a roof or on the ground you know, and, and you can put up a plant in six months. Uh, a, a, a new coal plant takes years to go. Uh, a new nuclear plant yeah. can take a decade. And, and solar you know, is, is so much less than that. You can just uh, advance it to the point where uh, you don't need to worry about the time so much.